All right, how's everybody doing? Welcome back. It is Autodesk 3ds Max 2018 YouTube Classroom video number four. Today, if you're following along with the class, it's quarter one, week one, day one still. Today we're going to uh, continue and we're going to do an introduction to the viewports and interface of the 3D Studio Max uh, 2018. So, uh, as you can see, we have uh, four menus here, four quad menus here. Or we call these viewports. Now you'll notice we've got a top, a front, a left, and a perspective. Uh, we also have this area over here, which is usually filled up kind of like this. And we've got this section here. Um, this section here is is called the viewport layout area. And actually, we don't usually keep it. I don't usually work in the viewports uh, or jump to a bunch of different viewports until we get into animation later. And we'll deal with that when we get there. Uh, I usually end up doing something like this three view or something like that. But for now, we don't really need it. So a great way to get rid of these is see this sort of double dotted line. If you right click on that, you'll see it says viewport layout tabs. I'm going to deselect this little box and it goes away and it gives us that real estate back on our screen. Now what we have here is either the uh, scene explorer snapped in or it's probably the um, layer explorer. Okay. Either way, we can actually get rid of this as well by right clicking on this little double, uh, dotted double line. And where it says Scene Explorer, Layer Explorer, go ahead and deselect that. And that puts it away. Um, you can actually get it back by clicking here. Now, you might have it so where it sort of floats out on its own. And when you toggle it, it pops out right there. Uh, if you have that sort of situation, that's fine too. With any window, you can drag them wherever you want them. So if I got the Scene Explorer and I want it over here, all I got to do is drag it over here until I get that blue box. And then I can let go and it snaps in. If I want this to be above it, so it's sort of, I get the best of both worlds with both of them. So I've got like the Scene Explorer um, and then the Layer Explorer. I can do that. Um, honestly, the Scene Explorer, uh, usually the hotkey is H. Well, Select from Scene is H which is basically the same thing. The Layer Explorer is just this button here. So I actually use the Layer Explorer quite a bit, but we're not going to use it today, so we don't have to really worry about it. I'm going to go ahead and click it up here, and when I toggle it, I get the four viewports taking up the most space, which is what I want right now. So you can see the gold box as I click on every uh, one of these viewports. And the viewport, if you click one, you get the gold box. And if you right-click again, you'll get a bunch of uh, options. So a separate option menu will come up. And that's uh, really valuable to have. Um, but for now, we don't really need to mess with that. What we are going to do today is we are going to go through some of our, um, just, just an overview of some of the different tools and setup. Okay, so we all already talked about the toolbar up here is um, the ribbon okay if you go into uh, customize and show UI if you ever lose your ribbon that's where it is so customize show UI show ribbon now you're probably gonna forget that and there is a hotkey that makes it go away um, I don't know it offhand but you can lose it so this here is the ribbon so I like to keep that on uh, a lot of what it does can be done in other places, but I still like to keep it on. Along the Show UI button, the Command Panel is over here. So Command Panel is this section over here. So if you lose your Command Panel, you know what that is. And let's see, your main toolbar is that section up there. Customize, Show UI, Main Toolbar, so that's back. And then Customize, Show UI. Uh, the track bar. Now the track bar is this section down here. This is for animation. Um, we don't really need it today, but we're going to leave it there because it's pretty useful. Um, and it doesn't take up a whole lot of space. At the bottom, we, are, we also have show floating toolbars, but that's not selected because that's usually just a little uh, chunk of stuff. You could snap it up here if you want. I'm just going to leave it uh, where it was and I'm going to remove it because we're not going to need that today so 
when we work in the quad view here, which we actually don't do very often, and you'll understand why in a second, but when we work in the quad view, it's a great chance for us to look and see how when we manipulate something, it actually adjusts things uh, in the other views. So to create an object, I'm going to go over here and make sure that this button is selected. This is the Create tab in the Command Panel, and this is the Geometry. Now we are going to Create in the top tab, Geometry in the second tab. There's a whole bunch of stuff. And then Standard Primitives is what it should be set to by default. You can click a box, and now you'll notice um, I've got a weird little thing chasing my cursor around. If I hit S, and you'll see it pop up here when I hit it. S toggles snaps. So if I just tap S, you can watch it change up here. Ready? S, S. So you'll notice my little snap is gone. I'm going to leave it off for now. Um, anyway, I've got a box loaded in my cursor. All I'm going to do is left click and drag on a diagonal, let go, and then push up again, and then click left click again. Okay, so what I've done is I've created a box, and I want you to do that as well. Once again, you're going to let make sure you have box selected, hit left click once, and drag, hold it and drag, let go, push up, and click it again. All right, so you probably have one, so I'm going to have one. I uh, hit the Q key on accident. All right, now to move this box around, I'm just going to hit W, which is the same tool as select and move tool. All right, so I'm going to move that here just so we have a nearly the same thing. Now, um, if you move this up and down, if you drag, if you look closely right here, you can see a gold, uh, a gold arrow. And when I move this just along that arrow, it moves up and down. Now, in the front view, which you can see here, it actually does move up and down. All right. If I move it left and right, in the front view, I'm moving it to the left and right. But if I move it on the y-axis in the front view, it doesn't look like it's changing at all. Now, that's a little bizarre, because if something gets closer to you in the real world, it looks bigger. But in an orthographic view, which are what these three panels are, orthographic... Um, orthographic, that's how it looks. So in an orthographic view, you can, I just turned on a whole bunch of stuff, but I wanted you to see it. So in an orthographic view, things that are farther, far away still are the same size as they would be if they were up close, which makes your brain sort of hurt. Um, so in a perspective view like this, I've got the front of this box looks way bigger than the back, and I can actually force it to go to wireframe. So you can see the front of the box here looks bigger than the back of the box. Whereas if I look at this from the front view, in an orthographic view, even if I scale it and change the perspective, it doesn't look right. The farther square on the back, or rectangle I suppose, is the same size basically as this. Okay, and that was the front view. So I'm going to hit front to change that back. Um, so the perspective view gives us this, but what's nice about the orthographic view is we can use this in a bunch of really interesting ways to make sure we snap things together, we make sure that uh, things are organized and, and perfect that uh, we couldn't do so well here uh, in the perspective view. So that's the big difference between orthographic and perspective. Now, almost every other, actually every other um, viewport is in a orthographic view. The top, the left, and the front are all orthographic. The perspective view is the only one that is perspective. So when we select and interact within these viewports, um, we can do that in a bunch of different ways. So we've talked already about moving stuff, but we haven't got really into a whole lot of things about how to do that. To move around in a window, it's all based off the middle mouse button. Okay. The middle mouse button is how you move around. So if you want to move in and out using the middle mouse button, you just scroll forward to move in and scroll backward to move out. So in and out. So go ahead and try that now as we work through it. 
in is up on the scroll pad or forward on the scroll pad and going further away is scrolling down on the on the mouse wheel i think i've been calling it scroll pad but i meant like mouse wheel so the mouse wheel is where we want it um now in the top in the front view you're only going to move up and down which is just pressing in on the mouse wheel not rolling it but pressing it up and down that pans in all of your views now if you hold alt and drag the middle mouse button or the middle mouse wheel you you spin around the object and that's really useful in the perspective view but in these orthographic views it's not so great so usually in the orthographic views we just hit uh, we just use them for what they are so the front is the front we don't rotate around it we will pan around by using the middle mouse button to pan but we won't rotate using alt middle mouse hardly at all so front alt middle mouse to roll around there now a nice uh, trick or you know one of your first hotkeys that you're going to need to get comfortable with is alt w when you hit alt w it maximizes whatever screen or whatever viewport you're working in and it's a toggle so if i want to highlight the top view alt w and it makes it big and now i have all four viewports have been replaced by one large top viewport that means that usually we're going to work in the perspective viewport and then we're going to work running around like this and if i want to look at it from the front instead of alt w right click front alt w again what i'll usually do is i'm going to change this back to uh get rid of the wireframe override so um instead of doing it like you know trying to get to the front view like that um i'm just going to hit f for front or p for perspective or l for left now you'll notice that it's changing over here if I hit F, it changes to front. If I hit T, it changes to top. If I hit um, P, it's perspective. So those are your hotkeys for today. Those are the big hotkeys. Alt W changes your viewport to from the quad view, in this case, because we started in the quad view, to a single viewport. Then we have T for top, L for left and F for front once again P for perspective so that is the interface stuff that I wanted to cover today now the next thing we're going to do is actually start using some of these ideas and start building stuff so we're going to actually create things move them around make copies and all sorts of fun stuff so that we can make cool objects and be awesome oh one thing you might notice i just did um if i select something i hit delete and it deletes it but you'll notice this widget uh this transform widget if you hit w select an object by clicking on it hit w and then you'll be able to move things around okay the w key is select and move which you can also select here um, i usually keep my thumb on the alt key and then i usually keep my ring finger on Q. Uh, Q is select, so you can just select anything. So if you have multiple objects, I'll make a cone real quick, and I hit Q, now I have nothing selected. If I hit Q, I can choose what I want to select. This can be helpful if you're trying to select things. You can also select things with W, but sometimes if you accidentally drag it, um, that can be really bad. Uh, so hold Control and press Z for to undo something just like in word so q is select so i can select things w is select and move you'll notice if i grab this little square in the center of x and y i will move it along that axis only so if i'm working with something in the perspective view i can make sure it stays along the ground that it is currently set on without moving or if i've got something uh, against a wall i can do z and y and it will move just along the wall and it won't ever go into the wall any further uh, and then each individual arrow is constrained along its specific axis so that's also really useful so that's w which is select and move now if i hit e 
it goes down to the next one which is select and rotate now there's a couple different ways once again you can constrain along the axis which is really helpful for instance if I want this to spin like a drill bit I can just grab this yellow axis which is my Z axis and it will ro rotate only along that no matter where I put my mouse if I move it up and down it still only rotates along the Z axis now if you grab if you grab outside of one of these gold rings then you get weirdness basically it tries to rotate along whatever angle it you thinks you're trying to look for uh, this can be useful occasionally but generally I find it frustrating um, so here's a neat trick as well if you start moving something and you don't like it before you let go like I just did and now it's stuck so I have to hit control Z if I start moving it and I'm like oh I used the wrong tool instead of letting go and then hitting control Z I can actually just right click and it snaps it back so that's that's a great little way to fix that and our final thing we're going to cover is R R is scale you can scale things with R if I grab it along the inside of this um, triangle it will scale evenly along all directions if I just want to make the drill sharper or taller uh, I can pull it along one axis or just like our other tool if I want to make the whole thing skinnier I can do that so now I've got a much uh, much sharper and skinnier unicorn horn is what it is duh uh, and then I can put it over here on my unicorn box see look it's a minecraft unicorn and anyway that's it next thing we are going to make today is a snowman we're going to get started on that real soon so thanks again for watching video four i hope these videos are helping and i hope you've paused it enough to make sure you're catching up and practicing as we go because during the next video video five we're going to start making a snowman just like uh elsa yes so we'll see you next time